Hello everyone, a warm welcome to all our Allspace viewers. I'm Patrick So and Happy New Year. We're going to ring in the new year uh, with the January Sky Report. Okay, we're going to start with the evening sky. We last left off in December was that if you look in the evening sky and look to the southwest shortly after sunset, you're going to see a bright planet and that is the planet Venus. And Venus is going to be with us all along this month. Here's a picture I took last month showing Venus right next to Saturn. Uh, Saturn has since uh, moved westward into the glare of the sun and will no longer be visible this month. So Venus is all alone in, its, in the evening sky, but it does get a visit once a month by the moon. On January 27th at 6 p.m., if you look again to the southwest, the moon will be about four degrees below Venus. And that's a pretty sight and worth taking a picture to show your friends and family. In the evening sky and in the middle of the month, around about 10.30 p.m. on January 15th, our winter favorites, Orion the Hunter, will be in the southern sky. The easiest constellation to find if you're looking for constellations for the first time. Uh, Orion is marked by three stars for its belt. A bright star known as Betelgeuse, just above his belt, marks one of his shoulders, and below the belt, the bright star Rigel. You can also use Orion as a signpost in the sky. If you draw a line down along the belt stars of Orion, you'll end up at the brilliant star Sirius. Sirius is the brightest star in our night sky, and it's very unmistakable because it shines with brilliant light. And at this time of year, it shines with all colors of the rainbow as the air rises from the ground and causes all atmospheric distortions and causes a twinkle. Now, there is another star that's not well known here in Los Angeles, but does make a very brief appearance at this time of year. And that is the second brightest star in the sky, known as Canopus. To find it, you need to draw a line and find Sirius, and then draw a line all the way down near the southern horizon. And once you draw a line down to the southern horizon, you'll see a bright speck not far above the horizon, roughly about three and a half degrees. And that is the second brightest star in our sky, Canopus, in the constellation of Carina. The star itself only spends about three and a half hours above the southern horizon, so you've got to catch it at the right times. I kind of suggest January 15th at 10.30 where it's the highest, so it's a challenge for you to go out and take a look at it. Last month, I did go out and take a picture to see if I could find it for myself. This is the picture I took on uh, December 19th. Orion is just way up there on the top right, and you can see Sirius. Way down below, I've labeled Canopus. You can only see this star if you live south of 37 degrees north latitudes. Canopus is known as the Great Star of the South because it's seen high overhead in the southern latitudes as in the southern summer evenings. And of course, the seasons are reversed. It's winter in the northern hemisphere, while it's uh, summer down there in the southern hemisphere. Moving on from the evening to the morning sky, there are some interesting objects that you can spot. If you look towards the southeast shortly before sunrise, around about 6 a.m. on January 20th, and the first thing you will notice is the moon, which is a thin, waning crescent, and right below it is the planet Mars, kind of reddish in color. It's not very bright at this time of year because it's quite far away from Earth, but close to it, is a, another reddish object, and it's actually a star known as Antares, which is in the constellation of Scorpius, and it marks the heart of Scorpius the Scorpion. Now, its color is similar to Mars, and it was known to the ancients as a rival of Mars, just because of, of the similarity of color. Another planet that you can see is the bright planet Jupiter, low in the southeast. That's a little bit more challenging because as Jupiter begins to rise, the sky will brighten and you lose your view of it very quickly. But it's worth taking a look. And moving on to our lunar calendar for January 2020, there is a full moon on January 10th. On the 17th, it's the last quarter, and on the 24th, it's a new moon. And on January 4th, there is a star party here at Griffith Observatory where members of local astronomical clubs set up their telescopes for viewing, and it's free to the public, so you can come up and look through any of the telescopes at all the celestial sites of that evening. 
there is also a meteor shower this month. It's called the Quadranted Meteor Shower. This particular shower peaks on the night of January 3rd through to the morning of the 4th. The meteors radiate right below the Big Dipper, so look to the northeast in the surrounding vicinity, and you can see up to 60 meteors per hour in a clear, dark sky. So that means far away from city lights. Now, it's going to be chilly at this time of year, so make sure you bundle up, bring plenty of hot coffee and tea with you. This shower is definitely worth going out to see. So that's your January Sky Report. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone, and uh, go out and observe our beautiful skies are for everyone, and cheerio!